Wesley Johnson died last night. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We're in mourning for Wesley Johnson yeah, yeah. right now. I mean, if he'd have came back, monkey dunked on everybody, then yeah, would have been like, oh, Yeah, but you know right. what the problem? Do, uh, Doc didn't put him back in the game. I wouldn't so have put him in. So two minutes after. Now he, that is disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. yes. oh, Doc my. didn't put him back in the game. That is the worst shit ever. I get when mixed you, you don't get, put me in. When you get mixed up or dunked on and get subbed. Ooh. Oh man! Yeah. Like you, there's no revenge dunk or n- nothing. You just sitting there, just yeah, just looking at just, and you just got to sit there with, or, with the dude at the score table, like he coming to get me. Yeah. Or, or when he called a timeout, because you know when they call a timeout, they go to commercial. Yeah. Oh, they commercial. Replay. You know what they play? on replay over and over and, and you over. You probably know like, oh, your boys gonna roast you on right. your text message. And, and then also to the Rockets bench. Trevor Reza damn near ran to the other end oh, of the court. Oh, he should be suspended. <laughs> he, I mean, he left the bench. <laughs> suspended. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I remember mean, when I got dunked on by D-Wade, fell and everything. Jeez. And coach called a timeout. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> you know, all I'm thinking is, please be a 30 second. Please be a 30 second. Full minute. Full. Full minute. <laughs> <laughs> all I can hear is, ooh. <laughs> Welcome back to Out of Bounds. I'm Pierce Simpson. Today's episode is obviously in a memorial of Wesley Johnson because we'll talk about a variety of things, including Wesley Johnson, probably again <laughs> by the end of the show. I'm joined here by Complex Sports Editor Adam Caporell, who was at the game last night. Cap, uh, it was more excitement in that arena for that game than the All-Star game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but still, uh, it's weird. The Staples Center crowd, I don't know if it's an L.A. thing, a Clippers thing, or what the case is, but, like, Staples Center wasn't really buzzing last night. Yeah. And, like I, and like I said earlier, the only time it got loud and, like, really amped up was for James' obliteration of Wesley Johnson. <laughs> Taking his soul. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a Hollywood town. You know, Hollywood, you know, they, they think they're too good for to be true fans. And so. speaking of Hollywood, we got Mr. Gilbert Arenas in the building who's dripping in wealth. I <laughs> see you right now. Like, boy, you shining. You know, I, I got this from Fashion Nova. <laughs> <laughs> you going to be selling tummy tea on your, on your Instagram? <laughs> Yo, hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, big, big night in the NBA last night. Uh, I believe it was a full gamut of games. We saw the Oklahoma City Thunder and Dallas Mavericks. Of course, we saw the Houston Rockets and Los Angeles Clippers. But the Mavericks game was interesting for a variety of reasons because they lost and that further fuels the notion that they're tanking. Adam Silver sent out a memo to the NBA warning teams about tanking. USA Today, Sam Amik obtained Silver's memo, which read, The integrity of the competition on the playing court is the cornerstone of our league. We must do everything in our power to protect the actual and perceived integrity of the game. Mark Cuban was fined $600,000 for going on Dr. J's podcast and allegedly saying losing is in the best interest of the team. There's a variety of losing teams this season. Your Knicks, the Chicago Bulls. Uh, your Mavs. Th- of course. Hey, I want them to lose. The Memphis Grizzlies, Magic, Kings, Hawks, and Suns are all trying their best to lose. Gil, what do we think about tanking? Is Adam like Silver on the right path? Right path of what, bullshitting? Trying to trying to get trying to get back. Bullshit. Bullshit. It's bullshit. Like, come on, Adam. You're you're <laughs> it's the NBA. You like you're gonna find him for actually being honest when the same teams lose every fucking year. Like, like how much did he find Glenn Taylor of the Minnesota Timberwolves? That's been tanking for the last fucking 13 years. <laughs> but, like, have you find this man yet? But he, or, because the, he ha- or the Suns? I mean, like, you, you've missed 13 playoffs. You're a fucking NBA franchise, and you're telling me you can't put a team together to win nothing? But Just so you can get all these little draft picks and then trade them out and trade them in? Like, that is tanking. That is official tanking right there. But, and I guarantee you he hasn't lost one fucking penny. But in that, in that memo, Adam Silver had some, some other words that seemed to hold, have some teeth to his merit about punishing teams if they do tank. If we ever receive evidence that players or coaches were attempting to lose or otherwise taking steps to cause any game to result otherwise than on its competitive merits, that conduct will be met with the swiftest and harshest response possible from the league office. 13 straight years of losing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that's evidence right there. But maybe they're just a bad organization. That's evidence right th- No, because the, the, the women's team was at the Linux. The Lynx. The Lynx. The Lynx? They're first place. The Lynx is a they win championships. They win championships over there. So he, obviously he, your man's division is just, you're just tanking at to get all these new draft picks. What is the, what are you doing over there? They might make the play. What's the fine? Have you suspended this guy? Like, I mean. Do you, know, you know why he said this, though? For gambling purposes. Of course. They're behind yes, gambling, and they want to obviously have the idea that the, there's integrity of the game and there's no compromise in the results of this whatsoever. This is all about a gambling play from Adam Silver, and he had to make this as a PR stunt whatsoever. But, like, tanking is a way of life in the NBA. It's business. Yeah. This is what goes on. This is how teams get better eventually. So, yes, some franchises are worse at it than others, but tanking is a way of life. It's what needs to happen. It's natural. It's right. 
The worst, the, the worst better? Eventually, yeah. The, the yeah. worst place to be in the NBA is in the middle. Yeah. You never want to be the franchise that's in the middle because okay, you're the, not good enough to compete for a championship and okay, your odds okay, of getting the top draft pick are Let's low. just be honest. There's only five teams, five teams in the NBA that actually want to win a championship. Then you have the middle of the road who's just trying to make the playoffs. Yeah. Then you have about 10 teams that don't give two shits about any of it. Because, I mean, Minnesota, I guarantee you that guy's making fucking bread. Get these young guys in. Get the city behind it. Before you pay them, get rid of them. Bring them in. It's like a fucking circus over there. That's why they're losing. It's, it's a fucking tank system. So you're, saying, so you're saying some owners would rather just get young, young players on rookie contracts, get the excitement up, and before they have Sterling, to... Sterling did it for fucking 20 years. Yeah. For 20 years, it's just bring the guys in, get your number one pick, your number three pick, let them ball right before they get great, get rid of them. And then how do you get ownership that really cares about winning? Uh, actual NBA fan. But, it, but <laughs> actual what NBA I, owner. Someone like, I guarantee you nobody knows who the fuck Glenn Taylor is. You just see. Well, you've been mentioning yeah, him nine yeah. times. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because I know who he is. But I guarantee no one knows who the fuck he is because he's just a businessman. He probably owns this, 20 McDonald's. Like, who, who knows what this fucking guy but, owns? But if, you, if you're Adam Silver, right, Mark Cuban is a highly competitive owner. He's one of the owners that will always try and put yes. a good team out there. But when you find him nearly a million dollars for his public comments about tanking, Shouldn't you just kind of let that go? Like, listen, I get yeah, it. Yeah, but that's the bad part. You're finding you a guy. A you're finding a guy who actually pays his players. He's loyal to his players, yeah. trying to make the organization a winning organization. And you have losers out there that you won't even look past just because they say they don't say shit. So how are you gonna punish those those teams that perennially tank or the organizations that perennially? I, I think there should be a system in where if a team doesn't make the playoffs four or five years straight, they should be fine. Twenty to hundred million dollars. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa! They're making that money. Excuse me. Whoa. They're making the money. Yeah, but I, no, no, no. The light owner, the ass up. The owners are going to lock out the players in a few years because they're going to complain about the finances of the, remember, of the NBA. It costs money to win. Yeah. That's what people don't understand. It, yeah. it costs money to win. The, the old theory is, I can give you a team. You can make five hundred million dollars in ten years and win five championships, or you can win no championships and make two billion dollars. Which one do you take as a businessman? You want the money. Now you see why your team's fucking losers. Yeah. They want the money. They I mean, give a shit about the team. You're on to something because the old adage is if you just pay the bottom floor of the salary cap and you just keep the minimum, you can get all the, and t- that's why the, the TV that, revenue. Look, and lockouts is never about actual players and the salaries. It's about these businessmen that can't come to an agreement. Like if you're the Lakers, you don't want to share your TV deal with fucking Milwaukee. Yeah. Like I'm the Lakers. I made a great investment. You're Milwaukee. Fuck off. So you got these rich billionaires that's like one side is saying, fuck you. The poor side is complaining. And then what they do, like, oh, let's take it from the players. Yeah, but a healthier league. But <laughs> let's in, take it from the players. We're just going to blame the players. But in theory, a healthier league is going to make everyone more money. Of course. What's a, a healthier league? But then you got to get these guys and say, hey, you can't make $50 million every year. You have to just you have to put some, a team out there that, that's willing to win. Or maybe the issue is you have too many owners that are trying to get into basketball operations and don't know what they're doing and trying to make decisions and affecting the team overall. I mean, very <coughs> early. James Dolan? Exactly. Mark Cuban's one of them. Well, James Dolan, but he at least pays players. Like, man, he's yeah, not, the wrong ones. Yeah, he's, not, he, <laughs> ugh, he's play, paying the wrong player. But as he's actually doing it. I mean, we can talk about Philly. Up until now... Philly was a team that you had a rookie of the year, got rid of him. All-star, um, Holiday, you got rid of him. Yeah. You got rid of every player that had any <laughs> yeah. that showed any success, you got rid of him. So, I mean, you were tanking for the most part until you got lucky with these two. No. And we're still not sure what's going to happen here. Oh, they've been tanking. <laughs> they've been tanking. <laughs> we're, we're, sure we're, we're not sure what's going to happen with Philly, too. Get you have wrong. two great players, and I guarantee you one of them goes. Get, oh, okay. Hot takes. Not your boy Ben Simmons. No. But for no time. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Right, anyway. <laughs> Moving to the NFL where things keep getting weirder in New England. Why do the Patriots try and stop Gronk from praising the TB12 method? So uh, this came out the other day that the Patriots reportedly didn't like Gronk uh, going hard for the TB12 method um, and uh, basically wanted to kill a story in which Gronk was profiled as being a disciple of the TB12 method. Yeah. If you don't know what the TB12 method is, that is the 
highly controversial or maybe suspect, depending on how you want to define it, uh, training regimen and diet of Tom Brady that was built by his doctor, trainer, life coach, shaman, Sherpa, whatever the fuck, Alex Guerrero, who, you know, maybe has some suspect background. But anyway, that's Brady's holistic approach to achieving sustained peak performance. Um, if that doesn't sound completely for Gazy, I don't really know what is. Yeah. But essentially, yes, the Patriots tried to kill Gronk praising the TB12 methods. So what the hell is going on in New England? They're trying to shade their star player. Brady with their star tight end, Gronkowski. That, that's always the big thing in sports. It's outside trainers mm-hmm. that everyone uses during the summer and your in-team trainers. Because, you know, as an athlete, you don't want to train with your in-team, in-team trainers in your summer. One, they're behind. They're fucking dinosaurs. Your team trainer are dinosaurs to everyone else. Right. So there's a big conflict of players in the summer – getting diets, getting these new type of regimens, and the, the team is like, wait a minute, I, I don't like that. that. That is not healthy for your longevity. So you have this clash, and that's what this is. is the Patriots don't know what the hell's going on in a TB12 organization over there. Uh, but, I mean, the ha- where it's housed is like right across yeah, you know, right, the street I know, street but that's what I'm saying. You don't know what's going on. So if anything ever comes up, they want to be a dispatch. We do not. He does not work for us. We do not agree with the method. Yeah. You know, if Tom Brady wants to do it, Tom Brady can. Yeah. You know, but it's like, as an organization, you really want to know what your players is putting in their system because it could affect them. Like, Gronk could probably lose too much weight. He can probably get slower. So you really want to monitor what's going on. So I, I see why. You can, you can shed some pounds eating that avocado ice cream real right, quick. Right, right. The Guerrero guy is interesting because, if I'm not mistaken, he settled out of court for – saying that his treatments would cure cancer. And the USDA was like, uh, absolutely not. That is not true. We're going to sue you. We'll take you to court. So he obviously has a very sketchy background. I mean, that's not sketchy. It's just To any- say that your methods cure cancer. Gilbert, if I see you, what I'm saying, what's I'm sketchy about it? I see you on the infomercial talking no, about my water cures what, cancer. What is sketchy about him saying it? Maybe he really believes that. Maybe he really believes it. And that, you, know, you got called out by the federal government yes, for saying you can't you, say that. You can't say no, that. No, no, that's not called out. They're just saying that because they don't want anybody. The last person that said, oh, uh, my method cures cancer, ended up in prison too because he was eating avocado seeds, which actually. Avocado ice cream. Apparently, just <laughs> eat avocados, you're going to be no, fine. No, I mean, no, What's no, the, no, no, apricots, apricot seeds. Okay. Moderate apricot seeds, and then they put him in jail because he was selling it that it cures cancer, which heard some people actually got cured. But they put him in jail for it. Anybody who says they're going to cure something, your ass is done. <laughs> Trust me, this government, your ass is fucking All right, done. So, so the TB12 <laughs> method is, a, is strange and gets ridiculed for uh, reasons because of the diet is insanely restrictive and Tom Brady does some crazy things. And also it's more like elastic bands and different elasticity and try to maintain, uh, you know, your ability not to get injured. Exactly. And, and Brady's been good at that. But um, Gronk tried to incorporate this past year. He said that he saw pretty good results for overall, um, revamped his diet, came in a little bit leaner. What is the craziest training method you adopted during your playing career? I remember um, uh, Denver with the altitude. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're not in Denver, everyone else gets a little winded. Yeah. So I That's went, a real thing. Yeah. Okay. So I went to my trainer and said, yo, are they in shape? Like, when they come to play us, are they in better shape? And the answer was, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I decided to start research and found the hyperbaric chamber. Right where I can have that altitude in D.C. So I had them come out, build a room for me where I can sleep at night in that altitude to help yeah. uh, blood flow and pump and help my heart move a little bit, you know, faster and stronger. And I actually seen the results. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then when I once I did it, everyone laughed, of course. And then from there, everyone started to do it. You know, um, I remember um, uh, Ben Ben uh, Gordon. Yeah. yeah. He put one in his room over his bed, and everyone started to change because, you know, you start seeing the results. Once you start seeing the results of something, people want – nobody wants to be on the back end of right. – They want to be ahead of the curve. They, they yeah. the curve. Um, this, this entire TB12 story and the Gronk story and just everything that's circulating around the Patriots this offseason, it just lets me know that this might be the end of their run. I mean, we see it time and time again with dynasties. You have the bickering, the constant back and forth, whether it was the ESPN story that happened during the playoffs. No, right before the playoffs. Then this story comes out, Gronk thinking about retiring. They obviously lost in the Super Bowl to the Philadelphia Eagles. We just see it time and time again, whether it's the NBA and the Lakers and their dynasty coming to end, bickering and losing and championships. I think this is the beginning and end for the Patriots. In the words of Bart Scott, 
Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Says the Jets fan that's here on the, uh, on Out of Bounds. That's amazing. But, fellas, uh, Out of Bounds wouldn't be – we wouldn't be us if we didn't talk about fuckery. And we're going to talk about the top five ways Did athletes – Did you say fuckery? Fuckery, yeah. Oh, you allowed to say that? I know I'm allowed to say fuckery. I didn't know you was allowed to say fuckery. Yeah, on here. Admit, admit, the crazy stuff you said on the – yeah. I'm, I can say it because <laughs> – so we're, we're I'm not talk. an employee. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk about the top five ways athletes have hit fuckery. Johnny Manziel went on his former teammates podcast, Joe Thomas and Andrew Hawkins, on Uninterrupted, and talked about how he went to Vegas back in 2015 when he was supposed to be in Cleveland recovering from a concussion. He, would go, he went on Instagram and posted a picture of his dog with the caption, hashtag Saturday nights and geotagged Avon, Ohio. Meanwhile... He was in Las Vegas wearing a disguise. Things got out, and it got very murky for Johnny Manziel. So we're going to go over the top five ways <laughs> athletes have tried to hide fuckery. Oh, At number five, goodness. Jeff Kent broke his wrist doing wheelies on a motorcycle in front of eyewitnesses and said he broke it washing his car. In, fr- in front of witnesses? Yes, in front of eyewitnesses. You couldn't come up with a better thing than I was washing my car? It never happened to you? Bro- broke your wrist washing your car. Yeah, slipping on, slip on, slip on the you're, studs. You're, you're an NFL player? Yeah. In- oh, well, baseball, baseball player in Jeff Kent. So you're a baseball yes. player and you're washing your own car? Broke your wrist. You don't have a couple Mexicans out there? Okay, number four. Moving on. <laughs> number four. Melky Cabrera <laughs> tested, <laughs> tested positive for steroids and paid $10,000 to create a fake website selling fake products, then claimed he accidentally ingested performance-enhancing drugs via a fictional product obtained on the website. Of course, the federal government got involved. And it all linked back to him. When are players just going to say, yeah, do you see how hard the motherfuckers is hitting out there? I want, I'm trying to get some pounds on me so I can, I can, I can absorb some of that shit. The motherfuckers are hitting like buses. Special props to the milkman's agent because he was the one that set up that website. Hey, shout out. Hey, yes. you, go, you go to the crazy lengths to make get, it get you an agent willing to do a bid for you. Hey, like, I don't understand. Like, just who cares? Just say, like, listen. And don't get the agent that puts uh, I was webcams that in the shower. That too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's <rough. laughs> Number three, Ontario Smith caught with the original Wizenator he used to pass piss tests. And the Wizenator's like where you have the fake penis and you... Yeah. yeah. That was, Did you ever use the Wizenator? No, I don't do drugs. Okay. Yeah, I was smart. 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 But you do... Commit, no, but... but see double violations. Hey, but the, <laughs> but the, Wizenator, the Wizenator is a big... It was a big thing back in the early 2000s. Oh, really? Yeah. When they first had the drug test. Any former teammates that used the Wizenator? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, yeah. See, that's my idea. No, 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 no. <laughs> so how it used to be is your drug test comes, you go in a, in a stall. Mm-hmm. So they used to have this shit attached to them. Now, can I ask you one quick question? I think in the NFL protocols, you have to be viewed while you give the test. So guys are actually now, watching you do your thing. Be- is that an NBA protocol also? Now, but before, it's just you go in a stall, you come out with your pee. So they used to have their little shit attached to them. Yeah. The body heat, they pee, come yeah. out. Then eventually... All the text he says, the guy is looking at you. <laughs> looking at you, P, you had to pull your shirt up, yep. put it in your mouth while they watched you. That's all funny to me because <laughs> as a guy watching, how do you go home and tell your wife, yeah, you know, today was good, you know, got to see LeBron piss. You know? <laughs> He's a very hydrated guy, you know, he, he takes care of his body. Like, how do you tell yeah, your, yeah, that's your, tough. your girl hey, that as long you as the check's clear. people piss? <laughs> <laughs> as long as the but you know what? You're getting six figures for that job. Hey, listen, hey yo, what's up? That is There's worse things to do. That's hilarious. Keep it things. You want to do hard manual labor? Right. Or watch people piss. <laughs> Keep it things going with the list. Isaiah Thomas, the the Pistons Hall of Famer and, and mm-hmm. all, you know all world point guard. <laughs> this is not funny. Was treated for an accidental overdose on sleeping pills and told reporters it was his daughter who was treated because she was very down. That's pretty foul to throw your daughter under the bus. Wait, so he got caught for overdosing? Accidental overdose on sleeping pills, yes. And then threw his daughter under the bus. Okay. I don't know if that's, like, worded wrong, but I thought overdose ends with death. That's not true? You can be resuscitated. Yeah. Oh, so he didn't, did he die or didn't die? I believe, I believe Isaiah, I, I believe Isaiah I believe Thomas Isaiah went to the hospital. He's, yeah. Okay, so it wasn't overdose. He just took too well, many. Well, no, I mean, he, it was a medical, he, he it was a medical situation. Accidental overdose, yeah. Paramex had to be called. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Situation. Yeah. They had to pump him, huh? Thanks. So. Uh, number one, <laughs> Derek Fisher left Nick's training camp and said he went to see his daughter. Then the Matt Barnes incident happened. Friend of the, friend of the program. Friend Matt of the Barnes. program. Friend of out of bounds, Matt yeah, Barnes. I mean, How you doing, Matt? I mean, I, I'm just saying because uh, we've heard Matt Barnes' story. Uh, that's, hey, you know, hey. That's, that's rough. 
every every NBA fan should be allowed to hear the story. Yeah, uh, that we heard. Matt told it to us off the air, and but it was the, only only Matt can tell the story. Yes, only Matt can tell the story. <laughs> but listen, yeah, you can you can gorgeous. go to a variety of different websites and get the full background of what happened as altercation took place. Was it uh, what was the city in California? Was it San Bernardino? San Bernardino? No, uh, Santa Barbara. No, no, where? Uh. One of them rich waters. Redondo? Redondo. Redondo. <laughs> One of them rich water yeah. places. Redondo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Redondo. Where people who make your kind of money live. Yeah. Very no, much. no, no. That's where Luke Walton's live. That's where rich Luke Walton makes your kind of money. Surfers and stuff. Oh. White people. <laughs> White people don't live in Redondo. White and light skin. <laughs> <laughs> So you live by rappers, is what you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he agrees. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I live. A little, a little different. I live in Oaks, yeah, by you know. <laughs> all hip hop. Gil, did you have any teammates that would try and hide these type of issues? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had uh, my rookie year or first two years, Danny Fortson. Big Danny Fortson, right? Big Danny Fortson. So Danny hated flying. Like if it was up to him, he would have put in his contract that he only plays home games. Because he just, he hated planes that much. So usually after it was, if we played at home and we had to fly out, Danny was going to be the last one. Like if we was leaving at. To get to the plane. If we was leaving at 10, we was on the ground still about 11 o'clock waiting for Danny. And he had all excuses in the world. So one excuse he said is, yeah, you know, uh, my mom, my mom just passed away. And, um, you know, I need to stay home. And, you know, get to my family. So there's like, oh, okay, okay, Danny, boom, boom, boom. So I don't know what made the team call. <laughs> <laughs> they called the number <laughs> of, one of, the, uh, one, of his, one of his emergency contacts. To offer their condolences? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah basically. <laughs> off the, and it was his mother. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, it was his mother. It was That's his bad. mother. Talking about, what? I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you got to get a better excuse that than bad, that, The man. sad part that is, is Danny actually wanted to fight the whole organization. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all calling my mama? Well, we, we thought she was dead. We was trying to. And you know what? I wouldn't have messed with Danny Fortson. <laughs> is, this, is, this, is, this, is this the same Danny Fortson that allegedly would keep razor blades in his socks? <laughs> that is also true. That is also true. We had a little yeah. rough discussion, a uh, rough uh, incident in, um, <clears throat> was it Denver? Oh, against who? Uh, George McLeod. Oh. I guess they probably had some beef going on. <laughs> and they got a little tangle. <laughs> they got a little tangle during the court. And uh, they both got tossed. So I was walking back. <laughs> I was walking back to the locker room. And I got that, you know, them six, 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 eight over strong, yeah. you know, power force back then. Hit me with the, hey, young fella. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Mr. Cloud? <laughs> hey, tell that bitch ass Danny, uh. I'm outside waiting for him so we can finish this. Uh, uh, and this is in a tunnel. All right, this is a tunnel. Hey, uh, Danny, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Mr. McLeod is outside. Wait, Mr. McLeod. <laughs> well, I got something for him. He rolled down his sock, two razor blades, boom, boom. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You played the whole game with razor blades in your socks? Wait, you taking this out during the game? Like, do you know skin rust with metal? Like, I'm sitting here just confused. Like, oh, shit. This, this wasn't even crazy. Detroit. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> yeah. Yo, hilarious. A mouse in the house. <laughs> All right. Anyway, move hey, on. That is a, it, it's, NBA is funny. It's like, There's some things that go down that's. It's laughable. Yeah. Like, people think it's like, oh, look look at the. It's laughable. <laughs> because nothing's going to ever happen. Nothing. But it's just hilarious, the stories oh, you can hear about. Percent. Unless you run into Jerry Stackhouse. Yeah. That usually that happens. Yeah, he, he makes it real. Yeah, he makes it real. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of speaking of hooliganism, we're going to talk about soccer for a minute real quick here because fans are going to be allowed to bring drugs into the World Cup come June. And what could go wrong? So yesterday, Moscow Times reported that uh, fans will be allowed to bring in weed, cocaine, heroin into the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Um, basically, stadiums will be stationed with checkpoints and verifying the authenticity of people's prescriptions to allow them to be brought into the stadium. Wait, wait, so someone has a prescription for heroin? <laughs> in cocaine and amphetamines. I, I didn't know you could get a prescription. Yeah, I didn't know you could get a prescription. Uh, or, what could go wrong? Exactly, Everything. yeah. I don't know. I mean, we, we've had some great... But time out. Soccer is one of the most like volatile sports ever when it comes to just fan conduct. Yes. There's a lot of fights. They throw flares on the field. So when you 
You imagine somebody high yes, on the heroin? Ho- the hooliganism <laughs> is going to be off the charts. In I, Russia, of I think. Places. I think the 2018 World Cup, if this is allowed to go down, yeah. will be the last World Cup. <laughs> and somehow We've, Donald Trump will say it was a great, great time. Maybe not. It might go well. We've seen some of these music videos. Obviously, <laughs> half these rappers in their their, their, their their recording studio is doing perp lean pills. Yeah, One thousand. Yeah, yeah. But there's not like thousands of people around I mean, them that's I mean, going for other teams. They're just going to be screaming Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah, if, you, if you go... It's 10 racks on a new chain. If, if reportedly, if you go through the proper bureaucratic process, fill out paperwork and have, you know, the prescription like in Russian or whatever, yeah. you can drink lean in the stadium. You how can do, you do lines of coke. That's what I'm up with hair. Cocaine. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how you get a prescription for... I'm pretty sure they're just going to take it before they get there. I'm, yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not 1920 yeah. and prescriptions of cocaine aren't just readily available. Got this but, you know, I don't know. Dog. Yeah, I got this coke. A about to do the two lines of the Hebron, smack it. But like, is this is this a way to get like criminals that maybe have money on the game into the arena? No one's that stupid. What do you mean? A criminal is not stupid enough to be going to an arena with drugs. No, when they're, in them. their system. If you have a doctor's note, you can. Yeah. No, no, you can get an arena. How about driving there? <laughs> You're still breaking the law driving that shit there. Yeah, maybe in the arena's nice, but all the checkpoints before you get to that arena is still guilty. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's the It's like a, a, <laughs> a big-time sting operation. Yeah, yeah. you know that guys. old turn-your-gun-in program they used to do in the hood? Yeah, turn-your-gun-in, no questions asked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turn around. You have the right to remain silent. Yeah, right. Same, same. <laughs> this gun was committed for murder. She's like, shit the fuck out. I don't know. All I know is the last place I want to get pinched for drugs is, like, Russia and get shipped to a fucking Siberian oh, camp. Oh, man. That's not the look. That sounds awful. Hey, out of bounds. Don't send us to the 2018 World Cup. I'm going to pass on that one. I'm going to pass. Yeah. Unless someone wants to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Cap, Cap's like, can we put money sponsor on the game? <laughs> Cap, can we put money on the oh, game? No, by the way, betting on the World Cup? Phenomenal entertainment. Who's Phenomenal wrong? entertainment. Who's wrong with this guy? In-game lines during the World Cup <laughs> is, is awesome. Is there any sport you haven't bet on? I don't do exhibition baseball. He has a sport. He actually has something. You know I what? mean, come regular season time, day baseball is, is massive amounts of fun, but exhibition baseball, I draw the line. <laughs> All right. What are we going to do with our boy? I don't know. I Listen. I mean, it, I, I told you, it's called I'm, a hobby. It's called entertainment. I'm pretty sure we're going to be paying off some bookies. Somebody. Somebody. It's going to be no, somebody no, in that rush. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on, man. Yeah, this is, this is yeah. the cap. Let him go. We need to let him go. <laughs> we'll give you an Out of Bounds mug. Here you go. Here but, you go. Let him go. <laughs> but that wraps up the latest edition of Out of Bounds. We'll see you all next week for Adam Caporale, Gilbert Arenas. I'm Pierce Simpson. We're out. That may be top five of our, uh, if you go to Complex Sports, our like, top crossover of all time. I think it has to be Is there a better cross? I mean, there's better crossovers, is this, but this is... Is this over AI, like the step over Tyron Lue? No, not quite, but it's close. I, Ooh, I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I think it is, bro. It's close. The I step over and the step over? I know he waited, though. He like, waited. Yeah, but wait. that's more offensive than what James did, stepping over someone? It's he, way more offensive. He crossed him, made him fall, was about to shoot and said, hold on, let me, let me take a See, look at him. I would call that gloriously disrespectful. Yeah. I, think what, I think what AI did to Lou was just, like, offensive. Like, yeah, you just yeah. stepped over, man. That's straight up offense. What's a more fightable offense, though? Stepping over me. Yeah. That's the more I'd have grabbed his legs, yeah. put him down in every day. You would have put a Draymond. Wesley Johnson was 10 feet away from him. Yeah, I would have grabbed his legs. Like, AI stepped right over Ty Lue.